Hey, vets, uh, Dave Ealing, uh, Veterans Did You Know. Um, we're at the LST still. We're winding up our job fair down here. Uh, we think it's pretty successful. We had uh, 64 businesses and literally hundreds of veterans that came down here and, and, and got some applications and uh, found if the job ready or not and got some leads. And uh, Jeff here is a, is a young man that uh, I wanted him to tell a story. As he says he's atypical. Well, maybe not atypical because he has some pretty unique skills in the military that oftentimes aren't transferable to the outside. But the, all the training you got as a manager and a supervisor and an NCO and all that kind of stuff is, uh, you know, that that's that's good to have. So take this and tell me about yourself. Okay, my name is Jeff Sellen, and I grew up in Ravana, Michigan. Um, <clears throat> after a few years of college at Baker College, I decided to join the military, and I went into the Air Force. Uh, after basic training in the technical school, I started out as an F-16 crew chief, which was a maintenance troop uh, to fix and uh, inspect and overhaul all the F-16s and make sure they're that's, fit for the fight. For those you don't know, that's the, that's the fast flames. That's, that's, that's the fast the, one. That's the big boys. Really Single fast. engine fast fixed wing, that's, that's right. Starting to become older technology now with the uh, evolution of the F-22, but <clears throat> still very effective. Um, uh, after my three years of being in the service, I decided to cross-train and I uh, went into flight engineering. And for those who don't know what a flight engineer is, it is a uh, position inside of the cockpit of an aircraft, uh, typically a large transport type category aircraft. I got uh, my first assignment as a flight engineer on a KC-10, which is an in-flight refueler. refueler yeah. um, <clears throat> and the whole um, job description that I did was I was the uh, aircraft systems expert in flight. Um, so and if something broke down in the air, they'd say, yo, Jeff, we gotta, I think we have a problem back That's here. correct. The captain would turn around, look to me, and say, what's going on? I would tell him what's going on and then troubleshoot to make the uh, aircraft uh, uh, be able Stay to still up. fly <laughs> yeah, and get to the uh, final destination. Um, and so with that, after my second uh, tour, which I ended up uh, separating after eight years, um, I went into uh, flight engineering in the civilian world through a company called Omni Air International, a DC-10 charter service out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, that uh, specialized in um, 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 flying troops back and forth to the Middle East. So I still had an involvement they're with... They were commercial? I mean... Uh, it's a charter service. Try, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, uh, so after transporting them for a little while, I became an instructor and taught new hires how to... Uh, uh, do the functions of the seat that I occupied, and um, and uh, just this past July, they offered me a position to uh, work with L3 Communications as a subcontracted uh, flight crew uh, to uh, do some research and development with the um, uh, Department of Defense through L3's contract that they had with them to collect data from missile launches and things like that. So we would do in-flight missile launch uh, data collection. Um, but because of the drawdown in uh, 2011, thank goodness we uh, got our troops back from the Middle East, uh, a majority of them. Uh, but because of that, it uh, hurt the it L3. Hurt, yeah. hurt L3 and uh, my employer Omni. So they decided to park DC-10 in uh, January and replace it with a Boeing 777, and uh, my job went away. So that was as of January. So now here I am, uh, May, still unemployed, looking for a job. Uh, I've been in contact with Jesse Michelson, uh, one of the uh, veteran reps down here at Michigan Works in Muskegon. Uh, very good guy. He uh, very knowledgeable and very professional in, uh, in his job. Um, he hooked me up with a few leads or whatever and told me about this uh, uh, wonderful uh, job fair they had today. And uh, so I made it a point to put it on my calendar and be here as soon as possible because of all the opportunities that presented themselves. Um, were there? Did you get some out? Yeah, there were some... Uh, leads that look promising uh they did have plenty of uh different uh industries uh, right in there yeah they had 64 employers today. 64 uh, employers good, i've yeah. seen medical places i've seen factories i've seen uh you know uh places that require cdl licenses and uh, uh many different things um uh through that or whatever i went and uh with the background i have i took it to alcoa and uh handed off a resume to walt and he uh was able to um, interview me just kind of on the spot to uh, try to gather any kind of information of what exactly I would be looking for and how my flying career could translate into uh, a factory type atmosphere. Um, so I sold myself on that, uh, hopefully the best I could or whatever. So there could be a possible lead with that. And, and there was a couple other places in there as well that uh, are possible leads. 
And this is something that we see with a lot of veterans that you, you come out of the military and you've got these very unique skills, the very high tech, critical professional stuff that you know a lot of civilians don't do. And sometimes it doesn't transfer, but they gotta look at the training that you had. My right. goodness, the, 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 all the training in eight years that the government sent you through. Mm -hmm. And then when you got out, uh, you were able to still do that except for the downsizing. Right. You, know, you get caught in that downsizing and stuff. And here you are with uh, a world of uh, experience and, and knowledge, but just trying to find that niche. It's almost like, uh, and I heard this, you're overqualified. You know, you're yeah. really overqualified. You probably should be sitting on this side of the table instead of that side of the table. But uh, right. But they're not. You need a hire. You need a job. You need to go to work. And so right. that's what you know. See, sometimes I used to tell them, I said, "Look, you're getting a Maserati for the price of a Volkswagen," and that's what they would be. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you and stuff. And so I kind of sold myself as uh, because of the inspections I do on the aircraft and the parts and components that are in it, and the uh, and kind of overseeing there, yeah. that the maintenance did what they were supposed to do, and the documentations involved with uh, you know you can't move the airplane without uh, documentation. Uh, pages signed off, so I kind of sold it like that as a quality assurance type of uh, yeah. mindset. Yeah. And uh, you know, my instructor, you know, I was an instructor, so I know government regulations and things like that to where I had to pass that off to the new hire. So I kind of went down that path to try to take the aviation out of it and make it a little more marketable for the skills that I was trained in the Air Force. Well, yeah, in the Air Force too, it's, uh, it's the uh, NCO Leadership School and the, the acad right. academies and all the stuff that you go through. That it's all management side of the house. Because after eight years, you're in management side. You kind of you kind of walk away from the you know the enlisted side as far as the, doing the job. You, you're in that kind of transition period. Not all you know, still hands on, but you but you got a lot of administrative duties and management duties to do along right. with it. So it's a lots of computer nice skills marriage. and yeah, all that yeah, stuff. And you come out and you get that stuff. So. So uh, hopefully today, uh, and you're a perfect example of a lot of the vets we saw come in here today, and I really appreciate you taking time and talking with mm -hmm. us. And uh, if you're out there and you're looking for an excellent, excellent person that is trainable uh, <laughs> and has got lots of skills and uh, would be a real asset, then uh, give him a call because we'll have his number for you. And, uh, and thanks for your service, number one, and welcome home. Well, thank you for yours. And so Air Force guys, we got to stick together. That's that right. Time, so you've done good. So All right. thanks a lot. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Dave. All right, thanks, folks, and uh, we'll see how we put this whole show together, and uh, I think we're going to have a good one here for you. But uh, a lot of vets got a lot of help here today. A lot of uh, companies got to see first quality uh, individuals that we think and we know our veterans are, and so uh, it was a good deal for everybody. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next round. Take it easy. Bye.